Hello, in this video I'm going to show you the main principles of Gaussian elimination, which is a method that is used to solve systems of simultaneous equations like this one here on the left hand side, where we have a number of unknowns, in this case x, y and z, and some independent terms which are the right hand side here, the 2, 1, 2. So the first step is to convert our system of simultaneous equations with our normal equations with x's, y's and z's into a matrix and uh, this is called the augmented matrix and this matrix this matrix has a column for the coefficients of x which is this one so 1 multiplies x here 2 multiplies x here 1 multiplies x here then a column for the coefficients of y down here which is the 1 multiplying the y in this row, the 1 multiplying the y in this row, and the 3 multiplying the y. That's where we get the 1, 1, 3. Then a column for z. And we have 1 times z plus 1 times z and 2 times z. That's our 1, 1, 2. Then we put a straight line and we finish the matrix with the values of what is called the right hand side which are the independent terms, the numbers that don't have unknowns. So we have 2, 1, 2, those go to the right hand side. So this is called RHS for right hand side. So once we have this matrix set up, now the matrix has three rows, rows 1, 2, and 3, and four columns, one for X, one for Y, one for Z, and one for the right hand side. The aim of Gaussian elimination is to get an upper triangular matrix, to so convert this matrix here into an upper triangular. That means that the values below the diagonal, so these values here, these three values, have to be zeros. So we're going to be converting the 2 into a 0, the 1 into a 0, and the 3 into a 0. We're going to be doing that by using row operations. Those row operations, I'm going to write them here. So those row operations that are, we are allowed to perform on this matrix are, first of all, swap two rows. Second, we can multiply or divide any row by a number. That means the four numbers in one row. Every operation has to be performed on every single value of that row. Then the third operation is to add a multiple of a row to another row. So we could say two times row one plus row two, for example. Okay, and we're going to be using those operations to get our zeros in the positions we were talking about, one here, here, and here. The first operation is going to be designed to get a zero in this position. So we have a two here, and we need a zero. So what we're going to do is take that two out. We change the sign, so if there's a 2, we get minus 2. If there's a minus 2, we get a plus 2. So we change the sign of the number we want to cancel. We multiply it times what is called the pivot, which is this number in this case. It's always going to be element 1, 1 for all the elements in column 1. Then we'll move on to element 2, 2 for all the elements in row in column 2. Excuse me, and this element here, so it's always going to be the element within the diagonal. So we're going to multiply minus 2 times the element in the diagonal in that column, which is in row 1, and then we add that into row 2, and that's going to give us our new row 2. If we do element by element, we have minus 2 times 1 plus 2, that's the first volume calculation, so minus 2 times 1, which is this one here, then plus 2, which is this one over here, and the value we get will overwrite that 2, which is going to be 0, as we want it. The next, cal next calculation is going to be moving across that row, repeating that calculation over and over again. So again, minus 2, multiplied by this number here get rid of those lines. this number here which is 1 plus the number in row 2 which is this one here we calculate that value and that goes into that position so minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1 we repeat the calculation minus 2 times the next element which is also 1 
and plus one again. Okay, right there. Plus one, and that's going to give us our minus one again. And the last element, and then the last element, let's not forget that our row has four elements. We're going to do minus two times this value here, which is two, plus the value in row two, which is this one here, plus one. So this is going to be minus four plus one is minus three. That means this matrix becomes, we keep the first row exactly the same, replace the second row with these values that we just calculated, and keep the third row. Then we will continue with similar calculations to get a zero down here and another zero down here. I'm going to skip those steps and let you check on the next video, but I'm going to finish the process to show you, show you how we get the final answer. And if we continue getting those zeros, the matrix we get is this matrix here. And now from this matrix, we're going to go back to this kind of notation with x's and y's. The same way we went from this system of simultaneous equations into a matrix, we're now going to go from a matrix into the equations with x's, y's and z's. So now that we have more space, this is our matrix. If you remember from before, we said that this is the column for x, the coefficients of x, this is the column for the coefficients of y, this is the column for the coefficients of z. And kind of this straight line is where the equal sign is. So we're going to start always from the bottom row, where there's two zeros, and we're going to write that, that's going to be minus 1 times z equals 6. And there's no x and no y, because in here, if we were to write them, it would be 0 times y and 0 times x. So that's our equation, z equals then minus x. Once we have z, we can go back up here to the second row. And in this case, the equation so this one here is going from the third row. Then we go to the second row. And then we're going to have 0 times x. We will write all the terms. Plus y. Plus z. Equals 3. Oh, sorry. That's a 3. But we know now what the value of z is. Minus 6. So this equation actually becomes y minus 6 equals 3, which means y equals 9. Now we know z and y. We look at the top row, row number 1, so first row here. The equation there says x, oops, sorry, so x plus y plus z equals 2. But we now know the values of z, which is minus 6, and y, which is 9. So this equation becomes x plus 9, which is y, minus 6 equals 2. And this goes the next step. We can just get our x, and that's our final answer. So x equals minus 1, and that's our final answer. x equals minus 1, y equals 9, and z equals 6. So just as an overview, let's go back to the beginning. We start with our system of simultaneous equations, write it as a matrix. Then we're going to perform row operations. They have to be one of these three to get zeros in these three positions down here. You have an example of one of those operations here. And the final matrix is here, where you have that lower triangle there with zeros. Once you reach that position, we always start from the bottom, on row 3 in this case. 0 and 0, so 0x, zero 0y zero disappear here in the equation. That's just multiplying by 0. 
and we get the number that we have here times z equals this number so in this case minus one z equals six once we know the value of the first variable then we can look into the second row where there's no x so we only have two unknowns but we actually know this third unknown which is z so there's only one unknown which is y so we sub in the six or the minus six sorry in there and get our value for y once we know z and y we can go back to the first row of our matrix there where we have x plus y plus z equals two but we know y we just calculated it here and we know z from before and that gives us our x and that's our final answer so this is the overview of how the method works now you can open up the videos with the examples there's three of them and write the question and work on paper as you go through the video pausing at each step and just using the video to check your answers or go back and retrace where you made a mistake then you can use the podcast once you know the steps and you're confident with those you can use the podcast to guide you through other exercises that are not the same system substitute maintenance equations as in the videos okay see you next week